In this video, we will extend our ability to model data using exponential and logarithmic models. So first, you have to make sure that you're given equally spaced x-coordinates. If that's the case, then data is exponential and is of the form a b to the x if the ratio of each y-coordinate and the previous one is constant. So we're not doing constant differences like we did for linear, quadratic, and so forth, but instead we're taking the ratio. And please make sure that you take a number and divide it by its previous one to find out what that ratio is because you always want to know what are you multiplying to get from one term to the next. And so then you work backwards and you say what is the ratio of the number I'm looking at by the previous value. So to determine whether f is an exponential function of x, we first establish that the change in x is constant. They are equally spaced. So now I want to compare a couple ratios. So I will ask, what does it take to get from 2 to 3 in terms of multiplying? I take the 3 over the 2. So th 2 times 3 halves equals 3. The 2's divide out, and you get the 3. But then to get to the next number, the ratio is 5 on 3. So then these ratios are not the same. It is not a constant ratio then, and therefore it is not exponential. Please note that it requires a ratio that's constant to be exponential because when it's of this form... You are, say, taking 3 and multiplying it by 2 to some power, so then you are repeatedly multiplying by 2, so that would be the constant ratio between your values. So because we do not have a constant ratio in this problem, in other words, we could show that work by saying 3 halves is not equal to 5 thirds, we now proceed to determine what type of function this could be. So from 2 to 3, we add 1. 3 to 5, add 2. Down the line, no constant ratio. So then we look at the differences of the differences. And then we find that the second differences are constant. Therefore, we are looking at a quadratic function. So just keeping us practiced on our prior knowledge. Looking at the next example, I take this y-coordinate and divide it by its previous one, and I simplify that ratio. 8 is a common factor, so I get 3 halves. So then that answers the question, what do I multiply 16 by to get 24? And then I want to know, what do I multiply 24 by to get 36? So then I take 36 and I divide it by the previous number, 24. They share a common factor of 12. That goes into 36 three times and 24 twice. And because these ratios are the same, and that means the answer to this one is yes, we do have an exponential function. For the next section of notes, we are going to create exponential models given data known as exponential regression. So we need our calculator. Note that the model produced by the calculator will not allow for any plus or minuses, so that means no translations can be modeled. So in this example, we're looking at tuition at the University of Texas, and it's already indicating to us that we want to use a exponential model, so we don't have to compare 
data to see if we have a constant ratio from one term to the next. And then we'll use the model to predict when the tuition at the University of Texas will be $6,000. It's always a good idea that when you're given values in years that you use a reference point. So here we, we will do years since 1999. That'll be year zero. And then we'll increase from there. Noticing that we have equally spaced x values, this is a good data set to try to create an exponential model. So into our calculator, we will input these values as y1 and these values as y2. So you go ahead and pause the video and input those values. Once those values are inputted, what you do then is a statistical regression. So you hit stat over for calc and then zero for exp regression. So an exponential regression. And you're going to, before hitting enter, you want to store that. So then you go down to the store regression equation if you have a TI-84 or before you hit enter with a TI-83, you go ahead and hit vars over for y vars, one for function, and one for y1. And then you could hit enter. Your regression model looks like the following. Rounding to the nearest hundredth place. That's your a value, and your b value is 1.07. Now that we have our regression model and it's stored in our calculator, we want to find out when the tuition at the University of Texas will be $6,000. So we will set our Y2 value equal to 6000 We'll get a graph that looks like the following once we go ahead and hit zoom. nine for zoom fit I'm um, sorry for zoom stat make sure your plot one is on in the y equals window you could scroll up over plot one and hit enter to turn that on so your graph will look something like the following you'll have your exponential model the tuition rate and then you'll have your horizontal line representative of the tuition value of six thousand we want to find the intersection, so you hit second trace for calc, five for intersect. These two graphs overlap at an x value of approximately 9.07. So that means in about nine years, or that will occur in the 2008 2009 school year. On the next page, we'll handle logarithmic regression. Natural logarithms can model many natural phenomena. In this example, we're working with population growth. So we have population in B billions, one, two, etc. So the X's are equally spaced. It's telling us to use a logarithmic model for the data so we don't need to check for constant ratios. What we want to do here is the same as the previous problem, but instead of hitting zero for stat calc for exponential regression, we'll hit nine for linear, or I mean for natural logarithmic regression. So go ahead and input your y1 and y2 values. Noticing that I'm keeping the years in the thousands. I'm not doing years since the first value of 1800. So after you go through the steps of finding your regression model and storing it, you'll come up with your population at year X is modeled by 1824.4. Plus 106.48 times the natural log 
of x. The r squared value was approximately 0 0.92, so this is an excellent fit for the data. And since we stored this into our calculator, when I want the value of the population at year 9, I could hit on my calculator, second graph for table, scroll down to the x value of 9, and read off the approximate value of 2058. In that year, that's when the population will exceed 9 billion.